G'day and welcome to my third video on a little side project that I've been working on. If you haven't seen video one and two, video one introduction to and a bit of a run through of what I've done. And video two is then how I've deployed Keystone onto Vercel. In this video, I'm going to talk about authentication and access control. So I've set up authentication using NextAuth uh, and uh, so I can add social, social auth providers. I'm using Apple and Google as well as username and password. So let's dive into the code. So first of all, uh, we in our pages directory, we're in a next app uh, in our pages directory, API and auth. Uh, we've got our standard next auth page, uh, and we we can see uh, we've got our auth options as well as the default export uh, for next auth. So a couple of interesting things here. My session. Uh, so I'm constructing the session here and passing in an account name, uh, the user itself, and then a couple of other bits of information, the user ID, which is from, from Keystone, uh, and the account ID, first name, um, and email address. So then I can use that, that in access control. I'm getting that uh, when we create the token, um, which looks up the gets the auth session, which just uses GraphQL run using a sudo context, a sudo context so we can actually find the user uh, without any access control on it. Uh, and yeah, passing that through to the session, which we'll have a look at in a second. So we've got providers. I've got the credentials provider, which uh, we can. Uh, use authorize, we pass through the credentials. Now I'm also using Turnstyle, uh, which um, is a Cloudflare's um, capture, uh, just to stop bots from trying to do things. So we pass through email, password, and turn Turnstyle. And first of all, we check the challenge against Cloudflare. Uh, if the challenge is no good, we return a failed. And then we, we, this is the secret field implementation. So I'm using the password field in Keystone. And what that does is it adds an extension to GraphQL uh, of this secret, uh, Keystone secret field. Uh, which is a way of both generating the hash and comparing the two. Uh, so then when I, I find where the email is the same uh, and the provider is credentials, because I don't want to look at any, any other providers, uh, and then I do the secret implementation and... Uh, compare so yeah if if there is a user that's returned I then compare their hashed password against the password that they've they've sent in and then if all's good then I return that user um, to get credentials uh, to yeah to get a token and then we've got our Google and Apple authentication providers there as well. So that's the that's the authentication. Uh, if we look at then how where how I'm passing that through to Keystone, uh, I've got in my uh, Keystone context, I'm using get server session. So, which comes from next, next auth, next. 
and I've got this get session context. Now I, I'm getting the context in two different places. One is in the pages directory or in, in API um, pages and the other one is in the app directory. Now if we're in the app directory, we don't need a rec res uh, and uh, next auth handles all that, uh, getting the headers and everything for us. Uh, and we get, get the server session, which returns the session that next has. And then we use this keystone context with session and pass through that session so that then we have a valid session in our access control. So if we have a look at say our, uh, my dashboard and say in so in source app dashboard students, if we look at the student list, which is getting all the students, uh, we just context is our get session context, which, uh, but we're not passing anything through because we're in the app directory. And then we can do a call on get uh, on content on GraphQL context to get the students. Uh, and if we look at that, we're just getting all of the students back, but because of access control, we're only getting access control and session. We're only getting back the students that this particular session will have access to. So if we have a look at our, my, uh, lists. So we're here in, if we look at our keystone, uh, TS and trace back from there, we've got our standard keystone. Uh, if we look at lists, uh, we've got, if we look at lists in schema, so schema, and then I've broken out a couple of lists just to make things simpler, but we've got this schema here. And then it's got the user list, account, uh, and student. And some of these I've just broken out to make it make it a little bit my code a little bit neater. So if we look, for instance, at student, that keeps on going to uh, go to the definition of that one. We can see we've got access control here. Now operation is whether I can perform the task. So all operations is going to put in create, read, uh, and update and delete. So that's a function that pulls in from Keystone Access. Uh, and I'm gonna say is logged in. So essentially, if, there, if there's a session, you're allowed to perform these actions and delete is only available to an admin. And then once you pass that, that check, it then goes down into the filter, which we've got, in this case, we've just got query and update. We can also have a delete as well, but because delete is only available to admins, I don't really care about filtering that down any further than that, because if, they, if they're not an admin, they can't delete. Uh, if they're not logged in, they can't do anything on this list. Uh, and then if they are logged in, we then, it then hits this student filter. If we go to that one, this student filter, which is in, we just created another helpers.ts, which is just a bunch of little helpers, mostly around authentication uh, and access control. So here, if the session data role is admin, which is just a select on my, uh, on the user table, then return true, which is just return everything. Uh, otherwise return, and this is a GraphQL uh, where clause, uh, as we can see here, student where input. Uh, and so only return the students where the account user ID equals the session user ID. So that way when I've got a session and I query all of the students, it's only ever going to return those that relate to the user ID that's in the session. 
And you can see here a bunch of others. We've got enrollment filter, bill filter, bill item filter, and all of those. All of them fairly, fairly straightforward. I've just got if they're an admin, return everything. Otherwise, only return what relates to them. Uh, user filter. Uh, and then my little, uh, little helper functions up here, which uh, is logged in which just returns if there's a user a session user ID and is an admin and that re just returns if they're uh, returns true if they're an admin. So that's a little overview of how I've done authentication and access control. Make sure you like and subscribe. Check out the other videos I'll post in the in the description below. Check out the code. Uh, it's open source on GitHub. Uh, so have a look at that and we'll see you around.